Well, let's see the typical example of galvanic cell. Here is the one. So here is the process flow. Let's move on. As mentioned earlier, a galvanic cell is an electrochemical cell that converts the chemical energy of a spontaneous redox reaction into electrical energy. In this device, the Gibbs energy of the spontaneous redox reaction is converted into electrical work, which may be used for running the motor. Are all electrical gadgets like a heater, fan, and geysers. Daniel cell, also called as galvanic cell, is discussed in and is having the redox reaction like this. Zinc plus copper 2 plus will give zinc 2 plus and copper. This reaction is a combination of a two off reactions, whose addition gives the overall cell reaction. Copper with electrons will become copper and zinc will give zinc 2 plus ion and electron this one here reduction is happening oxidation is happening these reactions occur in two different portions of the daniel cell the reduction of reaction occur on the copper electrode while the oxidation is happening in the zinc electrode. These two portions of the cell are also called as half cells or redox couples. So the copper electrode is also called as a reduction half cell and the zinc electrode is called as oxidation half cell. Now we are constructing innumerable number of galvanic cells on the pattern of Daniel cell by taking the combination of different half cells. So each half cell consists of a metallic electrode dipped into the electrolyte. The two half cells are connected by a metallic wire through a voltmeter and a switch externally. The electrolytes of the two half cells are connected internally through a salt bridge. Sometimes both the electrodes dip in the same electrolyte solution. As in such cases we don't require a salt bridge. At each electrode electrolyte interface there is a tendency of a metal ion from the solution to deposit on the metal electrode, trying to make it positively charged. At the same time, metal ions of the electrode have a tendency to go into the solution as ions leave behind the electrons at the electrode, trying to make it negatively charged. So, at equilibrium, there is a separation of charges and depending on the tendency of the two opposing reaction, the electrode may be positively charged or negatively charged with respect to the solution. A potential difference develops between the electrode and the electrolyte which is called as electrode potential. When the concentration of all the species involved in a half cell is unity, then the electrode potential is known as standard electrode potential. According to IUPAC convention, standard reduction potentials are now called as standard electrode potentials. In a galvanic cell, the half cell in which oxidation takes place is called as anode and it has a negative terminal with respect to the solution. And the other half cell which in which reduction is taking place that's called as cathode and it's having a positive potential with respect to the solution. 
Thus, there exists a potential difference between the two electrodes as soon as the switch is in on position and the electrons flow from negative electrode towards the positive electrode. The direction of the current flow is opposite to that of the electron flow. So the potential difference between the two electrodes of a galvanic cell is called as a cell potential and it is measured in volts. The cell potential is the difference between the electrode potentials of the cathode and anode. It is called as EMF of the cell when no current is drawn through the cell. So the cell electromotive force is now as accepted convention that we keep the anode of the left and cathode on the right while representing the galvanic cells. A galvanic cell is generally represented by putting a vertical line L between the metal and electrolyte and putting a double vertical line between the two electrolytes connected by a salt bridge. This is how you will be denoting. Under this convention the EMF of the cell is positive and is given by the potential of the half cell on the right hand minus the potential of the half cell of the left hand. So it is given here. So this is illustrated by the example copper plus Ag plus ion will give copper 2 plus ion and silver. So half cell reaction will be cathode reduction is Ag plus ion become with electron become Ag which is sh shown here and copper will become copper 2 plus which is shown here. So it can be seen that the sum of 5 and 6 leads to the overall reaction 4 in the cell and that silver electrode acts as the cathode and copper electrode acts as the anode. The cell can be represented as this one. So E cell is equal to EMF of right minus EMF of left which is given by EMF of Ag plus with Ag minus EMF of 